it's a general uh, minimization problem. Uh, we have got this uh, z equals to 8x1 plus 12x2 and subjected to constraint 2x1 plus 2x2 greater than equals to 1 and x1 plus 3x2 greater than equals to 2 where x1 and x2 are greater than equals to 2 or 0 which is the uh, non-negativity restriction right so this is a generalized minimization problem and uh, as i told you uh, minimization problem we use a big m method to solve that and uh, the reason for that is in a maximization problem we get a basic feasible solution uh, initially then we refine those things uh, then we'll find out the optimal solution and that is a prerequisite for a simplex method when which the first initial basic solution should be there uh, to you know, fetch the further uh, stuff but minimization problem has an artificial variable which has a very big number called m in order to eliminate i mean in order to uh, find out the initial basic feasible solution you need to remove that m by row operation or elementary row operation so as simple as that right so i'm not going to confuse you i'm just going to tell you with this example and then we'll also talk about minimization case um, with a mixed example mixed inequalities or mixed constraints right so equal to constraints less than equals to and greater i mean this is a non negative restriction and something like that so we'll talk about that in detail so that um, you can do your assignments very well so this video as well as the one which we uploaded for maximization case that is more than sufficient for you to finish the assignment so if you follow through all the steps and if you make it on your own then getting 10 by 10 in assignments will not be very difficult at all as simple as that right so without further ado let's get started right so first uh, we'll come back to this a little later uh, we have to make this uh, inequalities into equality uh, how do we go about and do that is uh, we give this particular uh, you know decision variables like 2x1 plus 2x2 and uh, we'll first check for the right hand side if it is a negative valuable uh, value then we will be multiplying by minus sign in either side since it's have no negatives on the right hand side we'll take it as like then uh, since it's a greater than equal to uh, inequality, we have to convert that into equality by subtracting a slack variable and adding an artificial variable. Since it's a first equation, so we'll have minus S1. We also uh, do understand that we have equation 2 and that also greater than equals to inequality. So which means we will have another slack variables in equation 2. So what we do is we will put minus 1 X1 plus 0 x2 which which will be a contribution in equation 2 uh, in the equation 1 and plus uh, 1 t1 which is uh, the uh, artificial variable uh, 1 t1 and we also do understand there's another artificial variable in uh, equation 2 so that it is uh, plus 0 t2 equals to 1 so the right hand side is 1 right and then um, once we do that uh, the second equation we have got uh, 0 s1 which is uh, the contribution of the uh, first uh, equation and then minus uh, 1 s2 which is the corresponding equation plus 0 t1 uh, no um, since we have an artificial variable t1 in equation 1 plus 1 t2 so this is a second equation so we'll need an artificial variable in second equation as well and equals to 2 right so once we do that it's fairly the same right so in the previous case also we'll talk about uh, when we talk about minimization problem we have subtracted a slack variable and add an artificial variable right so once you finish that you go back to our uh, objective function then we'll have got x uh, 8 x1 plus 12 x2 plus uh, slack variable is 0 and the slack variable uh, 2 having the coefficient c uh, as 0 then uh, we'll add this slack variable here and subtract minus m t1 uh, which is the uh, bigger number m is a bigger number so that's the name of the method that suggests uh, m is a big m method right uh, minus m t2 so as simple as that right so what we do is now um, this is z we are doing a minimization problem so which means that we will take negative of z right so which means we will be converting this into a maximization case by uh, putting a negative z then remember that we will be mine uh, we'll be changing the sign and then uh, you move every term to the other side then it will become positive terms and it will become zero the left or if you rearrange it will get this something right 
So one thing uh, that I wanted to tell you is that initially you'll get like this. And uh, this is basis or basic variable, right? This will yield the solution. Um, what we're going to do is um, here we got only T1 and T2. The reason we use only T1 and T2 basic is that because it's a positive term like one and one here. Whereas if you take S1 and S2, remember in a maximization problem, we have got S1 and S2 here. The reason is that at that case, S1 and S2 is positive, right? We will be adding a slack variable. So this will be one S1 and one S2. So we have got that and we don't have any artificial variable that time. But sometimes uh, you might encounter both, whichever having a positive. Say in this case, uh, if the first equation is just uh, uh, less than equals to, then we'll have only, uh, you know, a slack variable will not have artificial variable then t it will not have t1 it will be instead we'll have s1 so understand that so don't worry about that so whichever is a positive term that particular value i mean particular coefficient i mean particular variable will be uh, put in the basic you know particular right and we also take this as w than z in a maximization case that's it fairly saying right uh, now what we're going to do is uh, in a maximization case where there's no artificial variable we directly jump into iteration one when which we will be selecting a column which has the least i mean most positive uh, i'm sorry most negative number then that particular column is a key column and then we'll use uh, the right hand side coefficient to divide that uh, value uh, in the key column then we'll find which are having the uh, minimum positive value in the uh, quotient or the minimum ratio, then we will take that row as a key row. But in a problem involving artificial variable, uh, we will be forced to uh, remove this particular M. Then we will start the iteration. So that's the one important thing that you should keep in your mind. Remember that in a in an, uh, case where there's no artificial variable, there's no problem at all. You can directly jump into iteration. Whereas in this case, uh, you will be forced to uh, remove that particular uh, iteration. I mean particular um, M value, then you uh, get into the iteration as simple as that. So first we have to remove this M. How do we remove this M as that? So we will be taking row three and uh, we'll be uh, multiplying minus M with row one. Row one here we have one. So which means it will get zero, right? Say that is repeated for the entire row. As simple as that, right? Uh, that's why the zero becomes minus m here. And then we need to remove this m. So how do we go about it? So we will be taking row two, uh, row one, uh, I'm sorry, row three plus uh, minus m into row two. That will make this to be zero. And finally, we have this particular thing, right? And this is the tricky part. So once you get this, uh, in a minimization case also, we'll be taking most uh, negative number. So in this case, the most negative number is this uh, minus 5m plus 12. How do we know that it's the most uh, negative number? Say if m is equal to 5, uh, some value, um, I just put, or you can even put m is equal to 100 or 1000. You check uh, which one in the most negative value. Uh, this 5m plus 12 is the most negative value. In this case, I put m is equal to 5. So it's just minus 15 uh, plus 8 is minus 7 and 25 minus 25 plus 12 is minus 17 so which means this is always this, uh, you know uh, you know uh, most negative so this column is selected and this is called key column and uh, this is the uh, entering variable x2 then we will divide uh, b by the key column say uh, in this case uh, you know 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 and 2 divided by uh, you know uh, 3 is 0 0.67 then we cannot divide this by this. Uh, it, it's meaningless, right? So it's meaningless. So among this, which have the least positive term, so this is the least positive term. So we will select that particular uh, row as key row. And the point of intersection of the key column and key row is the pivot, right? So we know that it's a pivot. And uh, this is an entering variable, x2, and t2 is a leaving variable. So which means that this T2 gets, I mean, T1 gets replaced by X2, which is the entering variable. And finally, uh, once we have the pivot element to be some other number other than one, we will be making that particular uh, number as one. So how do we go about and do that is we will be dividing the entire row by two. So once you divide entire row by two, so two divided by two is one. So we'll have got this one and the entire row gets divided by 
2 uh, so so complete row gets divided by 2 right then once you make that element to be 1 uh, will be uh, you know uh, making the uh, other elements in the key column to be 0 other than pivot we will be making the other elements to be 0 how do we get, make this zeros when we multiply by minus 3 plus the row 1 which is 1 we'll get this zero so as simple as that uh, how do you make this to be zero is when we add uh, this particular uh, element with uh, um, the particular element here the pivot uh, multiplied by uh, plus 5m minus 12 so once you add that this will become zero so as simple as that and not only that we'll be adding it the entire uh, particular row and finally uh, this iteration is over and we will check uh, whether um, all the elements in the indicator row is uh, positive right so it's not true because we have got a negative m here so negative of any element this is only negative here because this is a positive value this is also positive value uh, be it any number uh, when you put it like uh, unless you put m is equal to uh, 1 and 2 this will become uh, positive right so but we know that m is a very big number so 1 and 2 does not make any sense because m will be something like 100,000 or something like that right and uh, this will be a negative number um, despite uh, if you put even uh, m is equal to 1 uh, not 1 because uh, this is 1.56 so some case like m, if you put m is equal 100 this will become uh, certainly a negative number right and this will be a positive number because any value you substitute in it's a positive thing other than negative numbers and zero right so and this also a positive term uh, because m is a greater number something like that right so this is only the indicator row w and b does not part of indicator row since it's a negative it's not contributes to the simplex methodology next we'll get into the iteration two uh, what we do is we select this particular uh, column which is like uh, you know um, key column um, when which uh, we have got uh, the entering variable is S1. Then what we do is we divide uh, this B value with the column uh, value. So 0 0.5 divided by minus 0 0.5 is minus 1. So it's a negative term and we don't have any other uh, value for comparison. This is the one and only value in a positive term. So we select that particular uh, row and the point of intersection of the key column and key row is the uh, pivot. And in this case, it is 1.5. So what we do is we divide the entire row by 1.5. Then that will make the pivot to be 1. Then by elementary row operation, we will be making this particular uh, columns, uh, in particular elements in the columns to be 0 and 0. And finally, uh, there is any other term left, uh, which is negative. So which means we have reached the uh, final solution. So this is just a two iteration, and we have uh, reached the final solution. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we have got x1 uh, to be um, x1 to be 0.67, and uh, this is not x2. This is x1, which is the slack variable of 0.33. But since we don't have x2, so we will take x2 as zero, and uh, w value is minus eight, and uh, we know that w is equals to uh, minus z say which means that it is equals to minus uh, I know so which means if you take ulta um, z equals to minus w so what we get is minus of minus 8 which is 8 as simple as that. right so this is the final value for this minimization case right so you can read this stuff uh, plenty of times then you really understand this and quickly we'll uh, see the mixed uh, constraints when which we have got equals to simple and less than equals to uh, generally for a, mac a minimization case will be greater than equals to but here it is less than equals to but do not get carried away first thing you have to check in the constraint equation is the right hand side value so in both the cases it is negative so what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply either side by negative one so when you do that uh, equal to remains the same Whereas the uh, less than equals to the inequality gets greater than equals to uh, when you do uh, by multiplying by uh, minus one on either side, right? So what happens if you have a, a greater than equals to and minus two? Then either side, if you minus it, then your the final value and um, final equation will be 
uh, removing the uh, minus sign in the right hand side and right hand side will become positive with the change in the sign it will be less than equals to in case if it is greater than equal to since in this case it is less than equals to when you put a minus one on either side it will become greater than equals to and remember um, in equality we will only have an artificial variable we will not have a slack variable right say that's why here it is uh, no slack variable but you can even still write it x uh, plus zero x one or something like that right? and since it's um, um, a sub i know this is uh, uh, greater than equals to we'll subtract a slack variable and add an artificial variable so this is a composite equation and you can take a look at that uh, particular thing so here it is um we'll be making x1 x2 and x3 three variables here yeah, we have got three variables and then s you can even call this s1 since it is only one s so we'll kept it s so in this case we have got zero and we have got minus one how do we get zeros that we have put zero s1 and uh, we'll only add a slack variable uh, artificial variable in case of equal to symbol uh, you can put minus it does not make any difference right minus zero or plus zero are the same but something and uh, t1 artificial variable uh, in uh, equation one and artificial variable in equation two and remember that we don't have uh, s1 in here because s1 is negative so only two positive terms is t1 and t2 and the process remains the same first you remove the m here and then m here and finally you will be selecting the most negative value so minus 3m plus 3 then you start the iteration 1 then iteration 2 in this case it has gone even iteration 3 and finally uh, once you uh, you know um, solve till the end say we got x3 and x1 sometimes you can see that you get x3 here and x1 here depending upon how do we get the uh, you know uh, entering variable and leaving variable and finally the value of x1 equals to uh, 3.33 and x2 is not there in this list so it will become 0 and x3 is 1.33 and you can say z value is minus 0.67 um, then when you I mean w value is minus 0.67 then you get a z value of uh, you know 0.67 right something like that as simple as that right so this is uh, you know very interesting thing that you should really uh, you know take a look at sometimes we mix convention like z and w but you can very well uh, rectify that when you do it uh, you know perfectly um, or when you practice it you just make sure that for uh, minimization cases w uh, whereas in other cases uh, maximization cases will have uh, z right something like that. Right, so I'll upload this document uh, in uh, MS Teams after this class, as well as I'll upload the questions uh, for digital assignment number one and also the sample assignment uh, in digital, as I mean in MS Teams, um, so that you can do your digital assignment number one uh, in good uh, manner, right? Something like that, right? 